<clears throat> it's Sherm from America F1, and we're here to talk about the recap from the Spanish Grand Prix, bringing it here to you live from Versailles, France, where we are going to be entertaining the European leg of the Formula One Grand Prix. We have Spain, then we have Austria, and then we have England. So that's the Red Bull ring coming up next. And then also after that is Silverstone. So let's get into it. There's a lot of things that happened, a lot of things that happened before the race, a lot of things that happened since the race. There's a lot of storylines to talk about. Let's get into it. Cue the music. I said cue the music, boy. They said it couldn't be done. They said it wouldn't last. White man, black man, America F1. America F1 coming to you straight from San Francisco, California. Sherman Tillman, Michael Lawler. America F1. So I'm here all alone. There's no Mike, there's no Paul, there's no PJ, there's no Scott. It's just me, Sherm, all by himself. So I don't have that funny repartee that goes back and forth, back and forth in this episode, but we're gonna give it to you down, not dirty, but down. Since we're out here at, on location, Maybe we'll talk about some of the things you could see in Paris, like the Eiffel Tower. Oh, you know, the Champs-Élysées, <laughs> the Mona Lisa. And I got right, and I do mean right up close, closer than anybody's ever gotten. N not like you can be there as close as I got, but you'd have to wait a very long time, like at least a good 40 minutes to get as close as I got, the shot I got. Well, well, I'm not gonna be able to do it and show it on this show. And the reason why is because we're on location. I don't have time to do all the edits. I don't have time to upload perfect sound and all that. We're just doing this and it's literally 1.30 in the morning. And I'm doing the show at 1.30 in the morning. I'm gonna upload it and you're hopefully gonna listen and watch it and love it. but there is no way that I'm going to stay up late editing and doing all that. So let's talk about the show. Now, before the Spanish Grand Prix started, we thought that we would hear where Carlos signs his sign. They said that during the Spanish Grand Prix, there would be an announcement. Well, there wasn't. Also, now, there was a reported email from some personnel, somebody, some insider, somebody that works at Mercedes talking about the sabotaging of Hamilton's tires with the wraps and how they're changing settings and how also that they thought the strategy was favoring Russell. And then wouldn't you know it, as soon as that email comes out, Total Wolf says, well, this this isn't from anybody at, at, at Mercedes-Benz. I mean, we're going to sue. We're going to sue. But then all of a sudden, Hamilton out-qualifies George. And all of a sudden, he out-races George in the race, even though George had one of the most remarkable starts since, I think, at the Spanish Grand Prix, Alonso did the same thing, where he started third. And, I mean, George just, <laughs> he got a toe, and then he got another toe. He went around the outside, he did a late break, and he was gone. He was gone. And I thought that there was a slight, I mean, probably 20% chance that he would win. I didn't, I, I thought Norris would get him. I really thought, I thought Max, Super Max was going to pass him because I just said, and when you went into the race and they said, and, and, and Max's engineer got on, Hey, you need to, you need to pass. You need to get this done right now. 
And as soon as he said that, like literally five seconds later, Max goes for the pass and completes it, you know? And I don't know if I'm supposed to show it here because they might like, like say it's like wrong or they might say it's like some type of copyright thing. Well, let's see what happens. Let's show it anyway. Let's show it. This is the pass or Verstappen on Russell. Wisely. Or just go for it, and I think just go for it is what he's trying to do. Russell tries to break the toe, forcing Verstappen around the outside. Verstappen says thank you. I'll and that was it. Uh, maybe that was just a little snippet, and we're not trying to resell this. So hopefully, F1 won't come after us and say that, oh, you can't be posting that, but it's all in a show and it's all to promote F1. So there you go. And as you can see, that was a great pass. Now let's get right into the 10 to 1. And what did we learn? Let's give a, there's mosquitoes, like, because I'm in the, the lobby right now. And you can see I'm in the lobby. And the doors are open in the back. And the doors are open over there. So there's lots of mosquitoes. And so if you see me swatting, it's only because I don't want to get bit. I, I, got, I got bit earlier. I don't want to get bit again because it itches. And I don't have any. Calib mine or Caladrill lotion. I mean, who brings that on the case? Oh, there he is. There he is. Get him. It's like being at Mike's house where the mosquitoes are all around. You know, I got him one of those rackets. I haven't given it to him yet, but one of those rackets where you could swat the dang mosquitoes and swat them away. Anyhow, so in qualifying, we had Piastri, Oscar Piastri at qualified 10th. Or at Esteban Ocon. Man, this guy's really after me. I mean, I know the blood is sweet. Maybe it's the orange shirt that I'm wearing, and that's why he's after me. We had Esteban Ocon in ninth, and we had Checo Perez, who just signed a new contract. And all of a sudden, well, he's qualifying eighth, he's qualifying tenth. You know, he's not doing too well. You get that money, and then hey, you know, I got that's that's why they always want to sign him to one and ones. I think, you know, like. We'll give you one year contract. And that's what that they were saying that maybe we shouldn't re sign him till the end of the year because his performance may go down once he signs his new contract. And lo and behold, he qualified eighth. And Pierre Gasly qualified seventh. And isn't it strange how, like, Ocon, pretty much for the most part of the year, has been getting the best of Pierre. But now, that Ocon's leaving and Pierre is staying most likely, all of a sudden he's out qualifying him, all of a sudden he's doing better in the race. And obviously there's been um, some, some team orders that went along with that, but it's kind of like the same thing that's going on with Hamilton and Russell. Like, hey, they know he's leaving. So yeah, I mean, it's a natural thing, it's natural. For if you know one guy's leaving and the other guy's going to be here, well, obviously you got to work with the guy that's going to be here because next year he's going to still be there, right? If that makes any sense to everybody out there. Like if you know one of your workers or co-workers is leaving to another company, everybody kind of starts, you know, hey, hey, you know, some people are like, hey, when you get there, you know, feel things out, see if there's any room for me. And then other people are like, bye, Felicia, like, get out of here. Like, we don't care. You want to leave us. So good riddance, you know. So we have Carlos Sainz, he qualified sixth. Charles Leclerc qualified fifth. George Russell qualified fourth. Lewis Hamilton qualified third. Max Verstappen qualified second. And Lando Norris qualified first for a second poll in his career now we gotta admit that before the race we all thought that okay lando's gonna get a pretty decent start but max is probably gonna pass him within a lap or two and it's gonna be the max for stepping show but they both didn't get that great a start i mean lando really didn't get a good start and because of that he tried to go over and then max kind of already had passed up so he couldn't like close the door you know for the turn and then while he did that they both were kind of like bogged down slow george was right behind lando 
and then he went right behind Max, and then right around the outside. <laughs> it was a good starting first lap. It was a good, well, probably to me, I don't know about you out there, but to me, it was George Russell's best start I've ever seen. I mean, because usually he doesn't have, to, to me, he doesn't have that many highlights, like where you're like, oh, that was really nice. And it was clean. It was a clean pass by George. I knew he wasn't going to hold on. I don't know if you thought he was going to hold on. I thought, now to me, and it's been reported when you look at the times and everything, the lap times, Lando had the fastest car that race. I wasn't really, the strategy wasn't that great. I mean, think about it. But when the strategy, they kept him out longer. You know, they tried to do an overcut, but usually the overcut's like one lap or two laps after. I mean, they kept Lando out like a good three, four laps. And then by then, the other cars, their, their tires are in that window and they're gone. They're getting their best times in. <clears throat> and then Lando's tires are in decay. So I thought, I, I thought they should cover. Once Max came in, Lando should have came in. And usually McLaren's pit stops, if you hear any noise in the background, it's because I'm in a lobby. And right now, I think the the guy who cleans the floors is coming with a big, like, floor cleaner. So he's, like, rolling it up. But when Max came in, then Lando should have came in. Or, he almost got me. Damn, Mosquito. I'm going to get him. Uh, or maybe they should have pitted Lando first, early, and then, then he can go. Because he would have came in earlier, then Max would have had to cover. You, you see what I'm getting at? But I think at that time, they asked Lando, what do you want to do? And he said he wanted to go for the win. He wanted to go after Max. He wasn't really concerned about George Russell. He wasn't really concerned about Lewis Hamilton. And they asked him on the radio later in the race, you, do you think you could pass Lewis Hamilton at that time? He's like, yeah, no problem. Because he knew he had the pace. That car was, it was I'm not going to say it was a rocket ship, but it really, this is the best that that McLaren car has been in these last couple of years. This window, these last couple races, starting in Miami, obviously with Lando went in, we won because of the safety car. But still, his pace has been good over a lap. Lap after lap, Lando's car is the fastest on the grid right now. So let's go to our 10 and 1. Esteban Ocon. Now, he finished in 10th. Gasly finished in 9th. A double scoring points for the Alpine car. It's pretty impressive. I mean, think about it. The, the Alpine car started the year out probably 30 kilograms or kg, whatever the European thing is to pound. So probably like 20, 25 pounds overweight, which is a lot in Formula One. I mean, a lot. And they had a crappy floor and the arrow wasn't really hooked up. And I mean, they were Top of the worst car on the grid for quite a while, you know, 18th, 19th, 17th, 16th. They were out there, they're in the rear with the gear. Now we're seeing quite a bit of improvement. And they re signed, as we all know, or if, if you've been reading, uh, Flavio Valatori, and he's the guy who years ago was in some um, kind of controversy with um, that was with where they, you know, the Bernie Eccleston, they said, oh, well, he told them to crash the car on purpose. And that's basically what the Masa suit's all about. But, you know, Bernie Eccleston's like 94, 90s. And so he's... <laughs> Moss is wasting his time. He's never going to see that money. So I don't even know what that's about. Uh, I mean, I know what it's about. It's about money. 
he doesn't really care about getting the title. He wants the glory and the money that comes with it. Because from what I hear, they've made some bad investments. And so the, the monster fan needs the money. So yeah. another thing with Alpine is this guy's in, this guy's out, this guy's in, this guy's out. These guys are in, these guys are out. It's just, just we've talked about it on the show before. There's no stability at Alpine. And I wouldn't be surprised if they sold the team only because I hear that they're not even entertaining using Renault power anymore. I mean, they're a customer team to Renault. I mean, it's, it's Renault, right? And they're talking about using Red Bull power now, which would be Ford because it won't be Honda anymore because Ford's supposed to be coming in. And we haven't been really hearing much about that lately. Think about that. Ford's supposed to be the engine supplier for Red Bull. Okay, but we haven't been hearing about Ford, you know, you know, in the background. How, oh, well, this engine's going to be great in the 2026. We can't wait. And, you know, this this new engine, because we've been hearing all kinds of things from Mercedes can. And, and I'm going to tell you why. And I, I know I'm skipping ahead. I know I am. I know I'm, Matt, Mike's not here to make me skip ahead or go behind, but and go off in a tangent. But listen. The reason why we're hearing all these things about the Mercedes engine being really good in 2026 is because they're trying to lure Max Verstappen. That's why they're trying to get Super Max. So, of course, they're going to put out all this PR. Oh, our engine's the best. Oh, wait, we're ready in 2026. We got such a turnaround. And, you know, they had the president or CEO of Mercedes Benz come out. Got him. Got him. Got him come out and he was saying well we have to lure the best driver on the grid even though they already have lewis hamilton and we have to do everything possible so they're trying to do and wouldn't max look good in silver so they're trying to do everything they can the pr machine is started and they're trying to lure max no matter what and i'm pretty sure they're talking to Alma marco and they're talking to everybody and you're talking to Josh Verstappen, who just was in a rally race and had a crash, and he's okay, but he had a crash and didn't finish the race. And it's on the net somewhere if you want to, if you're interested in rally racing, which is awesome. They would sell your mother if they could get Max Verstappen in that car. It's it's not it's the truth. They would they they'd sell your mom. Not only would they do that. They'd probably buy you a Christmas gift if you could get Max signed. Matter of fact, not, it just wouldn't be a Christmas gift. It probably would be a new brand new Mercedes. If you are friends with Max Verstappen and you could get him to sign for Mercedes and Max said, the only reason I signed is because of you, um, they'd take care of you. They, they would. They would. They would. Come on. Let's, let's go. In eighth place was Sergio Checo Perez. Signed a new contract. I mean, he qualified, what, qualified eighth, he finished eighth. And then Christian Horner came out and said, what a great job that Checo did. And he, he's doing that to boost Checo's confidence because we can see Checo is really hot and cold. In the beginning of the year, it was second, second, second. He was doing fabulous. He was the old Checo, but he's he's streaky. Like, if you, if you know anything about baseball or basketball, there's some streak hitters, like they'll go on a run for like five out of 10, six out of 15, you know, they'll, they'll get 12 out of 20, and then they'll go 0 for 10, you know, one for 12. And in basketball, you know, they'll come out and they'll have two, three games in a row where they're hitting 25 points, 30 points, 32 points. And then they'll have three, four games in a row where it's like 10 points, 12 points. So Checo's that kind of guy. He's a streaky. When he's on, he's on. When he's off, he gets into his own head. And he's pretty bad for, you know, a couple races in a row. I thought Checo should do better because that car is better than eighth place. That car should be, I mean, Max obviously has, got a seventh victory so he should be somewhere in that three to four range i think because i think 
the other drivers are better than Checo, right? I mean, Norris is better than Checo. Hamilton's better than Checo. Yeah, I know even Russell. I know how Russell's not my favorite, but Russell's better than Checo. Leclerc's better than Checo. Science is better than Checo. Piastri is really good. Am I going to say he's better than Checo? Probably not yet, just because Checo has that. He's the master of defense. And, you know, we're not talking about Alonzo because Alonzo didn't make it into the top 10 on this last race because the Aston Martin car is going backwards while everybody else is going forwards in performance. I'm sure he's upset about that, but he's not better than Alonzo. I don't, I don't even think he's better than Hulkenberg, personally, but I digress. And Mike's not here for me to digress with, but let's keep on trucking. So. Oscar Piastri, speaking of Oscar, he, he um, finished in seventh place. Now, he qualified in tenth. So that's a pretty good move up for Oscar. And, you know, he didn't have the greatest of race. I mean, I, I thought McLaren's pit stops. Um, and I also thought the strategy wasn't up to McLaren's standards. Usually they're like 2.2, 2.3, 2.2, 2.3. You know, they had a couple uh, in the threes. And then that strategy, which, here, here, here's the thing I don't understand. If you have one car on one strategy, and the if they're both close together, like say they were second and third or third and fourth, okay, let's put them both on the same strategy. But if you have one car in second and the other car in eighth, you got to change the strategy. One car has to be on one strategy. The other car has to be on the Another strategy. Why? Because the car in the back has to do something dramatic. I'm not going to say dramatic, but definitely different than the first car just so they can move up more. You're going to take more chances. And so in this race, you saw Mercedes kind of, well, I think uh, Hamilton, he was on the softs at the end, but George was on the hard. Okay. Probably George should have been on the softs too, but he didn't have any extra softs. And I think before the race started, that's what Hamilton was saying that that's what their plan was. I don't know. George didn't come out and say, well, well my plan was something different. But in the case of McLaren, I thought they should have mixed the strategy up a little bit because I think Piastri should have moved up a little bit more. But Considering their strategy, considering the pit stops, and it was a high degradation kind of, well, I mean, it was hot, but Oscar moved up two places. Could he have got Carlos Sainz? Well, he finished two seconds behind Carlos. He finished 33 seconds behind Verstappen, and Sainz finished 31 seconds. So, could he have got him with a better pit, just with a better pit stops, probably. But you never really saw him in when you're watching a race. You never saw Oscar right behind Carlos Sainz where you, you thought maybe there's a chance he could have passed him or had the opportunity to pass. Him. So, and in sixth place, now this is what I really want to get to. In sixth place, we had Carlos Sainz, and in fifth place, we had Charles Leclerc. Carlos Sainz, this guy, man, you're trying to get and go to a new team. Some of the things that you hear Carlos Sainz and some of the things you hear George Russell and some of the things you hear Lance Stroll say on the radio just makes him look bad. It, it makes him look whiny and complaining. Carlos had the nerve to complain about Lewis's pass. And he said that he didn't think it was legal and well, we're gonna go by the rule book. But then if you looked at the pass he did to his own teammate, he rubbed wheels. He shut the door on Charles. That should have been penalized. The only reason they didn't penalize him is because they're teammates and it's Ferrari. But he was, his pass was worse by far than him equating to what Lewis did, which was a good pass. It was a matter of fact, there were some 
The pass that Lewis did on Carlos was the best pass of the race, but the pass that George did on two cars in the beginning was an awesome pass and then max for stepping past george what another i mean there were some pretty good passes in this race i i think lewis's pass was probably definitely the best best pass of the month definitely the best pass of these last four or five races i mean it, it was racy it was daring it was fast and i thought that carlos moved on the braking because when they're going down that straight didn't you see Carlos just went like that, like, like an abrupt turn because Lewis was going this way to go on the inside and Carlos went like abruptly that way. So Lewis went this way and then he went that way. And I, I thought that was, <clears throat> I thought that was kind of, I'm not going to say kind of dangerous, borderline double, double move. And why do all these guys race Lewis harder than they race Max Verstappen or each other? Because he did that to Lewis, but then later in the race, when Norris passed him, he just moved to the side and Norris just passed him up. I was like, well, where was all this hard racing when you were doing it to Lewis? Where, where'd that hard racing go? Where, where, where'd it go? Did it, where, where did it? Carlos, man, you're going in the team. We don't know where you're going yet. Everyone says you're going to Williams. I think you should go to Audi. Oh, who cares what I think? But what I do know is stop being a whiny little bitch on the radio, dude. Come on, man. You, you sound, it's a pass. It's, if you think that pass was illegal, then we might as well stop racing. Like, just let's like stop. Because then no one can really make a pass, right? The only way you can make a pass is under DRS. Okay, so just come on, man. Just take responsibility. <laughs> Your car wasn't as fast at, at this racetrack than Lewis's car. The Ferraris weren't as fast as the Mercedes car. The Mercedes have moved forward in improvement. And I think at just this track, it just didn't, and these last couple of tracks, it just didn't suit the Ferrari as well. But also, it doesn't help when you race your teammate harder than you race the rest of the field. Charles Leclerc finished fifth. Uh, where probably he should have finished this race. Um, it, 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 he qualified fifth. He finished fifth. But the other, the Mercedes, the McLaren, the Red Bull, right, right at this moment are faster cars. Like they started out ahead of Mercedes, and they were the third fastest car because in the beginning of the season it was Red Bull, obviously, and then McLaren, and then Ferrari. But I think Mercedes has caught up to Ferrari and probably according to what the track it is, it'll either be Ferrari ahead or Mercedes ahead. But I really think because Mercedes brought a new floor to this race and they didn't have to report it because it was pretty much the same floor, but it was lighter. Okay. It was a lighter floor. So they're making upgrades and I think we might even see for the years out, Mercedes actually won a race this year. And that would be great because this season is really a lot better than we thought it was going to be. And it's like near the end of the regulations where the other teams start to catch up, we get some pretty exciting races. And I know this is really annoying for me to keep swatting at this mosquito, but he just won't leave me alone. And I could get up and move. And, you know, we're going to do something different. Mm -hmm. We are going to do it live. And we are going to just pick up and move down the hall. Because that mosquito is just really, really on my last nerve. So, and you get to see in the background uh, the Versailles uh, Hotel. And you get to look at that while I'm walking away from that mosquito because that mosquito was on my last nerve. So I should have done that earlier, which would have made a lot more sense for me to move, but I didn't. You live, you learn. So we were talking about Charles Clerk, and he, he had finished in fifth place, and in fourth place was George Russell. 
George had a, okay, George Russell. Last race, he was on pole. He didn't win. This race, he was third, but he was in the lead. He didn't win. Lando Norris was on pole, and he didn't win. So this goes to the point that I have to say. And all these people always say, it's the car, it's the car, it's the car. Anybody can win if they have the fastest car. It's not true. You can see it. You can see it. You have to have a driver that's capable of winning. It's not just having the fastest car. You have to have good pit stops. You have to have good strategy. You have to have a good start. You also have to be good on your tires and make your tires last and keep performance in your tires when needed. So there's more to it than just having the fastest car. And you, you out there always say, oh, if so-and-so had the fastest car or if he was in Max Verstappen's car, he'd win the championship. And I even hear some of you knuckleheads out there saying, oh, if Lance Stroll had Max's car, uh, he would win the championship. No, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. And this proves it again. There's more to racing than having the fastest car. Yes, that's a lot of it. Yeah, sure. It's probably 80%, maybe 75% probably 80 but that other 20 percent is the driver you have to be consistent you have to be on point you have to know how to save your tires and tire management you have to have good starts you have to have good strategy and feedback to your team if they say let's do a, plan a you say no i don't think so let's go with plan b and if they say do you think you should come in on this lap you say no uh -huh. I, these tires are good let's let's stay out so there's a lot of things that go into winning a Formula One race, but not just winning the race, but being a champion. It's the consistency. It's being able to do 10 laps in a row when you need it with one minute, 12 seconds, one minute, 12 seconds, or what? One minute, 11 seconds, 58. One minute, 12 seconds, or four. One minute, 12 seconds, one minute, 11 seconds, 54. One minute, 12 seconds, 08. I mean, just right in a row, you have to do 10 laps of consistent times. A lot of these guys can't do that. Just not, they can't, they all can't do it. That's why they all can't be champions. Even in the cars that they're in, no matter what car you're in, if you can do consistent lap times, that proves that you can move into a better car. And that means that you have the chance of winning a Formula One race. If you can't do that, if you slide on the corners, or if you make a mistake in a critical moment, or if Lewis Hamilton is saying it's hammer time and he's behind you for five laps and you give way, or Fernando Alonso is behind you for five laps and you give way, or Max Verstappen is behind you for five laps and you give way, you cannot win the championship. So I don't want to hear no more about it. Okay? Just stop it. Stop. In third place, one Sir Lewis Hamilton, who had a pretty racy race. Racy race, racy race. I thought he had a good race. I thought Lewis had a good race. He said that he thought last race he could have won or he had a chance of winning, definitely on the podium. He should have been on the podium. But it is strange that that email comes out and then all of a sudden Lewis outqualifies George only by a little bit. I mean, it was by, I think, two one thousandths of a second that he outqualified George. Very minute. But obviously in practice, we see again, he's dominating practice. You know, he's first in practice or he's second. I mean, he's really setting really great times in practice, but then in qualifying, George gets his data, uses it, <laughs> copies it for the most part. And, you know, I mean, let's, let's be honest. I mean, George is a good qualifier. They use Mr. Mr. Saturday, right? So he is, I, I can't believe this mosquito. Did he follow me way out here? 
man, I'm way down the hall. I was way over there. You saw me. We walked way. We were down there. We walked all the way down here. And it must just be another one. I mean, it just, they're everywhere. All right. So, Great Race by Lewis Hamilton. I hope to see more of that. But this next track is in Austria, which is a Red Bull track. I mean, it is the Red Bull ring. We went to that race last year, and the Max fans are great. Uh, shout out to the Orange Army. I'm wearing my orange today. We ha I had a ball. What? Lots of drinking. Lots of beer. Uh, here comes the cart. So if you hear a little noise in the background, I'm not editing it out. I'm not editing out because I'm just going to upload this. I'm going to bed and then, you know, more tour stuff tomorrow. So I'm sorry. I apologize. In second place, Lando Norris. Now, Lando, he said that he should have won this race. And it was all the start. He had a bad start. And because of his bad start, that's why he, you know, didn't win. He only finished two seconds behind Max. But I think at that time, Max was like six seconds ahead of him for a while. And it was just, Max was just managing the race. I mean, just because he only finished two seconds doesn't mean that if he, Max thought he was threatened, that he couldn't, you know, pull pull out, you know, a bigger gap. Because one, once you have the gap, you just manage to bring the car home. Don't make any mistakes. Don't crash the car. So it's kind of misleading to say, oh, well, Lando was only two seconds behind him. They're, they're catching up. Max is managing. Max is managing. But the McLaren is looking great. What a great job McLaren has done. What a great job they've done. I mean, Zach Brown, shout out to Zach Brown. You know, what, what a great job. What a great job McLaren's done this year. But upcoming here in this next race, it's 100% going to be Max Verstappen, in my opinion. It's the Red Bull, right? And in first place, Super Max Verstappen. Now, that pass Max did on George was awesome. And as soon as his, we're going to walk back, we're going to start walking because the internet down here is not as good. But as soon as his engineer came on and said, you got to pass him now, you got to pass him right here on this lap. I mean, Max passed him. Max a machine, dude. He's a machine. And I'm going to say it. And I'm, in years past, I wasn't the biggest Max fan because it's not just because he was winning. It's just because I thought he didn't have that much personality and all he wanted to do was race. But I like that he speaks his mind and he doesn't care about what others think. He just tells it how, how, he, how, how it is and he just says what he feels. But I'm also, last race, I thought when there was all this booing during his national, well, not booing, I'm sorry. When they were saying Lando, Lando, Lando during his national anthem. And I think Lando did it like a couple like these, like cheering people on to do that. I thought that was low class. I thought some, when any country's national anthem is playing, you should give them respect that that country deserves, just like you would want that when your national anthem's playing. So, you know, I, and when we walked away, I hope that the Wi-Fi didn't give way and we stopped the recording. I just hope it doesn't. I'll have to listen to this part back and make it sure. But if it did, I apologize because those mosquitoes were all over me. So just remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you can get updated when we have new episodes available. Also, we do a lot of shorts, and we'll have a lot of shorts coming 
from Europe. And we'll also do probably when we get home, like a kind of let's talk about the sights of Europe while we talk about the race thing, especially for Silverstone. Um, and be looking forward to that. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. We're a little late night here. <laughs> it's literally <laughs> it's like one thirty. <laughs> I got to go to bed in the morning, but I'm dedicated. It is one oh nine a.m. But you know, dedication. Got to get the show out. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. See you next week for another episode of America F1, and that will be at the Red Bull Wing. Ring, R I N G. Did I say Ryan? Uh, in Austria? And I look to see Max Verstappen win another one. That'll be his eighth win of the year. And people are saying, well, can McLaren or Ferrari catch him in the constructors' title? Uh, as long as Max keeps winning and getting 25 points, and Checo, he's going to start chipping in, you know, some seconds and thirds here and there. Uh, I don't see it happening. It's good. It's exciting racing because we, we now at least there's racing at the front, which we wanted to see. But I think Max is going to win this next race by at least 12 seconds. That's my prediction. Peace and hair grease and keep on racing, everybody. <laughs>